can you hear me okay? Can we check my my um, microphone? You might be able to hear my dog barking in the background. Can I change back to, um, oh, here it is over here, OBS? OK. OK, I think I am about ready. So change here. Okay, here. All right, I think I got everything going. I have like two cameras and a microphone and all this stuff. So it's kind of, oh, and I need to turn to see the comments over here on my computer on the side. So that's why you're, you're seeing me go back and forth here. Okay, good. Everybody can hear me, everybody can see me. I am so excited to be able to do one of these collage art assignments with you and to tell you a little bit more about why I am doing this little giveaway. It is a celebration actually because I have been doing these collage art assignments planners for a couple of years and publishing these books. And I've had stacks and stacks of books in my house and garage. And I'm starting to pivot away from printing books and selling books. And I have a membership now, as you probably know, a monthly membership where we do projects together and work on things and, you know, collage projects. So that's really exciting. And so with the books, I have been looking to try and sell them. And I just sold out of volume one a couple days ago and also volume three a couple of months ago and I have volumes one two and three of these I did a volume four but those ones are were in digital form only so no print books for volume four so but for volume two I have quite a few left and they happen to be my favorite of all the volumes that I have done why because um, I, I went through many different printers over the years and I was experimenting with, with um, print quality and paper quality and all that. And for volume two, I got a very good print quality, but the distribution was not so good. So I was not able to stay with this printer. But they did a really excellent job with putting the book together. I love the, the, the heaviness of the the pages let me turn my this is what i'm talking about there's the the pages are super thick not not super thick but they are a nice a nice texture and the color quality that came out uh, for the pages turned out really well so and then it's got these nice this nice big coil so that if you put 52 weeks of collages in here it, it really it really gets thick right and so it's there's a nice ability to expand the growth when you do your collages in here and it's got this nice little pocket in the back for having putting your loose papers or little things like that and then a couple of little tear out um, sheets for you know some ephemera that you could do in your collages So that's why I am celebrating with doing this, this giveaway. Um, it's, it's, a, it's such a great volume and I want more people to be encouraged to do collage art assignments on a weekly basis. I really believe that collage is a skill that you get better at it the more that you do. Talent, talent is a factor, but I think it's a really tiny factor and I I get pushback from people and they say wait a minute talent art and talent is so important and talent and art is is so important but I really do think that skill is underrated and it's such an important part such a por important component of of being a good collage artist um, I I started just like everybody else completely new not knowing what to do and it took me a very long time it took me years 
to get comfortable with doing collage. And part of it was doing it over and over and over again. And with the weekly, weekly planners, these are also really great because a lot of people say, I don't have time for art. I, I just, I'm too busy. I have too many responsibilities. I would love to do more, but I just can't. And the good thing about these assignments is that they are really narrow. They give you a list of prompts of things to look for through your day or through your week. And I talked about it in that um, video I did about five minutes at a time, doing art five minutes at a time through a bunch of segments through your day. If you don't have time, just the act of thinking about the papers that you need to be gathering and keeping an eye out for stuff, that's really being active. That's being mentally active and you're creating. You're, you're not doing stuff with your hands, but you're doing stuff with your mind. Your mind is engaged. And that is so important. And it's a huge part of, of creating art, right? It's just your hands that are doing the final part, but it's your brain that is putting this all together. So the assignments are really great for that. And um, over the years, I've gotten some really nice emails from people saying how how the, the, the books, the, the planners have really helped them. Um, one lady sent me a message that her mom was, is in a retirement home, and this is something that they would do together every single week, which was so nice to hear. Another person wrote me that uh, she was a military vet with PTSD. Um, she's not able to concentrate on, on doing projects or tasks for art, but really loves collage. And with the assignments, because they are so narrow and because um, she's not overwhelmed by all the all the choices of, of the pieces that could be put together for collage she was able to work on those assignments and she got a lot of joy out of that so it's those types of things those types of messages and things that I hear again and again so that really confirm for me that these these books these assignments they can be a really big help and they can just help you grow as an artist and um, just to find opportunities to, to find the joy in creating. And that's what I really want. That's, that's what I want. So it is a celebration that my first volume one, volume one and volume three are, are sold out. And I have these volume twos, which I'm, which I'm sharing with you all. Um, I've already gotten a lot of participation of people who have signed up. I've got at least 50 people so far, which is awesome because I'm giving away 200 and if I get, I'm sorry, I'm giving away 20 for the first 200 and if I get more than 200 signups, I will make 20 more books available to give away. So if we hit that threshold of 200 people participating, then I will make an additional 20 books available to give away and I'll mail them all over the world. Shipping in the United States is not expensive for this book because I send it media mail. So it's it's about $4, which is really nothing. So I'm happy to do that. Um, international, of course, it'll be more expensive, but that's all right. I'm, I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to share it. So uh, it's open to everybody. So anyway, what else do I wanna talk about before I get to the assignments? I think that's everything. I think I'm gonna switch my camera over. Before I start actually working on the special assignment, um, let me explain a little bit how I'm running this, this giveaway because, um, so many people are doing it. I needed to have a little bit of a system of, of how to do this. So I have a very special, a specific assignment that is, is for this giveaway. You work on it, create the collage, take a picture of it, and then share it so that somehow I can see it. Either you post it somewhere on social media, Facebook or Instagram or wherever, and then send me the link, or you just go ahead and email me with the, with the photo. And a lot of people are doing it that way and it's totally fine. So I have posted a couple of links already in the feed. And if somebody can just copy those and then paste them again so that it's, it's more current in the feed, that would be great. And those links are, um, the first one is to get on the mailing list so that you can hear who, who won in, in April. 
And, and also when you get on the mailing list, I will mail you, I will email you the, the assignment and the rules and, and all that. So you will have the, the written information. And then the second link is the link to the form where you put your name and your email address and here's the link to my photo. So if you could, when you submit your, your photo, if you can use that, that form, it's just a Google sheet with like three questions on it. If you can just use that form, that would be great. And even if there's no link for your, um, for your photo, if you just, if you're going to email it to me, then just say, there's no link. I'm emailing you. I'll get it. Okay. So that's what those two things are. Um, are there any other questions? Let me just check really quick in the feed. Um, one person, one person was asking me about the size. How big does it have to be? Totally is up to you. If you want to do a really small Rolodex card or something big, I just need to see a photo or a picture of it, right? So what, whatever size works for you is the perfect size, okay? So let me switch over my cameras and bring this down so that it's a little closer to the assignment. I don't, know, I don't know if you can read that, but that's okay. Even if you can't read it, I will read it out loud so that we can do this together. So how collage art assignments work and how they, they work in these glue books as well is that there's an assignment with five prompts and there is a sixth prompt, but that is a bonus. And you use the bonus in case you cannot find or you don't have access to one of the other five. So you it, um, get rid of one of the these and then you use the bonus uh, in its place, okay? So that is basically how you do it. So our prompts for this giveaway are something that symbolizes a celebration, something shiny, text in a foreign language, a label, rubber stamping in two colors, and the bonus is a postage stamp. In addition to these prompts, you can add your own papers. If you have um, some um, pattern paper or background paper or you know something that you wanna use where you wanna start your collage and put the things on top of, you know, your substrate, that's up to you, that's fine. And these, these are not hard and fast rules. These are just guidelines. So how you, how you choose to do the assignment is up to you. It's five prompts plus, plus a bonus, but maybe you want to stick all six things in there, right? It's up to you, totally up to you. So I have been looking for my, for my things and I have come across a few a few bits and pieces. So I already know that a postage stamp is going to be really easy. I mean, if I have a lot of postage stamps. That's not going to be a problem. Also, rubber stamping in two colors, easy. I'll, I'll be able to do that. No problem. Um, text in a foreign language, I, I'm i pretty sure I have, I have enough. I have um, some book pages and things like that. Okay. A label. Okay, I found this. There's some labels here, and I also found, I have some of these guys. These could be labels. Something shiny, that was really tricky, and something that symbolizes a celebration. So, hmm. Here's where you start digging and you start thinking and you start playing with ideas and oh that could possibly work. I found this, uh, this is a wine label I think and well it's in, it's in German so it's already in a foreign language but it has a shiny edge so I might be able to do something with this. Um, I also found these, this was from an old catalog. 
And I love these watches. I love vintage watches and, and vintage clocks. So, and though the, the paper and the image itself is not shiny, you know that in real life, if you picked up a watch that pretty much looked like this, it's pretty much guaranteed that it would have been shiny. So this is a shiny object, even though the paper itself is not shiny. But I do have shiny washi tape. So I could possibly use something like this. Um, I'm not sure if it would work in the collage, so I will just keep this on the side as another possibility. And what I'm gonna do basically is just test out things. I'm gonna put things on my paper and see what I can come up with, right? Now, celebration, that was also something that symbolizes a celebration. I didn't have anything obvious, Maybe I'll put this in the background or start with this. But I found this photo. These women look like they are celebrating something. Um, it says Hamburg. That's all I know. So I could, in my mind, imagine that these women haven't seen each other in a really long time. And they got together and they were celebrating being able to keep in touch for all those years. Okay, so that is the great thing about collage is that you can make your own stories about whatever papers that you find. So I have that and then I maybe I have a watch I could play with. What else? What else? Um, oh, the foreign language papers. Now, I've not, let me check to see, I need to be glancing every once in a while to see if there's any questions coming up because I do want to use this as an opportunity for you to ask, ask questions if you have them. Um, so yeah, let me check. All right, looks like we're doing okay. Wonderful. Okay, so I will continue. I will keep on going. So now I wanted to talk briefly about adding your um, special papers as far as if you had other papers that you wanted to use, like pattern paper. Now, where is my pattern paper? Oh, here it is. So I have some examples of pattern papers. I, I do like pattern papers. I don't use them very often um, because sometimes it's hard to find things that I can get to use, papers that will work with, you know, designs. Mostly I use vintage, right? So using something with a really busy design or the wrong colors, you know, that's, that's the reason why I don't use pattern papers so much. But they can be a really nice thing to add on and use as embellishments, small embellishments. Um, this is obviously a very busy pattern and that's fine, you can use it. Look, even if you put a picture in front of something that has a busy pattern, that works well, in my opinion. Um, the problems start when you put too much pattern paper and your eye goes to the pattern paper rather than to the focal point or what you want to draw attention to. So that can help by, you know, putting a smaller amount behind it. Here's another piece. Super, super busy piece of pattern paper, right? And if I put this together, this and this, you would be like, ugh, right? That's that's too much, that doesn't work. But if I put a small bit of pattern paper behind, that starts to look good. I even like it this way, kind of top to bottom. I would, you know, cut off the other piece over here. But just having this little bit around the edges, that does look very nice. So be careful with your pattern paper um, you know, if, if you want to use your pattern paper as, as the substrate, 
um, that might be a little challenging to make it work entirely. So instead, I'm using something with a very solid color, or I could also use a book page as a background. Let's see if I can find something. Something that's going to work. Okay, so here's another possibility of having this be the wrap background. It all depends on my pieces. So here is my foreign language. And here is my celebration. And something shiny. I will take one of these. Inga asks, do you want a minimal size for the collage? So no, not necessarily. I mean, this collage is for you. So if you want to put it in a glue book, for example, it would go over here. And this, this book is about nine by six, nine inches tall by six inches wide. Or what I love to do is I love to work in my eclectic page glue book. And this is basically the size of a postcard, which is six inches by four, which is on the small side, I guess. So these are the collages that I typically do in this smaller size. So I might even leave this open. Let me find a page where I could possibly put one in right here. So I will set this here and I might do the collage in here rather than a big collage here. So let me take, I'm going to take one of these. Take one of these watches. All right, so what else do I want to do? Do I want to add any pattern paper? I'm not sure yet. I also want to think about, oh, these are really pretty. Look at that. It's already turning out nicely. Let me see what it looks like if I take away, oh, this could be also text in a foreign language, this dictionary page, but let me see if I just do it like this. Let's see what happens. Okay, what else? I've got this. I'm not quite sure yet. And celebration, shiny foreign language, a label, a rubber stamping with two colors and a postage stamp. Okay, so I'm basically almost there, but I do need something else because I don't think let me let me see if I let's try in here let's try let's try right here so there does not always need to be a focal point in your collage in this case I have this fabulous photo and I want it to be the focal point so when I'm putting on my pieces I'm going to pay attention to how I'm doing that because I want this to be my focal point. So I could do something like this possibly. I'm still not convinced. I'm still not convinced. Let me keep on trying. Let me try this as the background. The photo is quite big and I don't want to cut it. I don't want to cut it. I want to keep it whole. This watch is not working. But then the 
this this uh, text is blending too much with the background paper. Maybe I was better off with the blue. So let me go back to the blue again. Okay, so maybe I should try a bit of pattern paper. That is kind of throwing me off. What can I do with brown? Um, now this isn't anything. This isn't any of my five or the bonus, but I'm just going to put it in here because I'm already breaking the rules. Let's see. If I go with this plant, then I don't know if I can do this plant. Maybe I need to switch and go with some numbers instead. Well, you know what? Now, this is kind of important here. The size of the photo, I had already said that this is what I want to be the focal point. Now, if you notice, this plant is pretty much the same size. So that means if I put it like this, you won't know which one is more prominent or which one should be more prominent. This would possibly work if it was a smaller piece. So I'm going to take this one out. And maybe I will put this one back in. And then I will have my language text over here and my watch over here and i think i do need a piece of pattern paper what should i use this i think is too much this pink maybe you know what's interesting is that there's this little bit of pink on here maybe i can use this Okay, starting to like this more. Something like that. Okay, good, good. I will cut down this pink probably to here. Cut that away. Cut that away. I still can add a postage stamp and I can play with adding or with using a different color as the substrate in the background. I have all these colors here. So if I want, let's see, not brown, not pink, not green. These are all pretty vibrant. Mm, orange, no, red. I could possibly do this dark red. Let me just test it really quick. I'm not sure if I will keep the blue or switch to red. Let's see. Mm, the pink doesn't really go with the dark red. Okay, I think I'm going to stick with the blue. So yeah, there's lots of decision making when it comes to collage, of course, and it can get frustrating and overwhelming and be like, oh, I just don't know. But the thing is, is that you have 
the ability to shift and move things around, of course, and you also have the ability to come back to it, to leave it, to set it aside, go do your thing, and then come back and see where that takes you. And I find that helps me a lot. That is probably the biggest factor in having me be and having me create stuff that I'm happy with is the time is being able to just set stuff aside so I think I want do we want the whole thing yeah okay let's try that this now I'm just now I'm just playing with the placement do I want it like this or like this or like this this edge is slightly darker that's okay something like this okay let's try that um, this text does it work better like this kind of does I like that the pink has to show and I'm hoping I have the text in the correct format and it doesn't go, no, it does not go like that. It goes like this. Okay. So that goes like that, this here, and then this could possibly go here and this like this. I'm not loving this. I'm not loving this watch. This watch is causing me all kinds of problems, but I don't have anything else. Oh, well, maybe that. Let's try that. Scoot it all down. Like this. How's that? Is that better? It's hard to kind of balance all these things. Okay like this. Okay, I think I'm getting somewhere. Now I have this big space up here. What do I do with that? Um, oh, I wanted this over here like this, didn't I? Okay, like that. Now I could put a postage stamp. I could do, do that. That would work. Shall I go with this? Let me test out this one. Which is better? That one or this one? So I'm trying to put something where these intersections are, where things meet. I could also put something over here, but I don't want to pull. If I put it down here, then I pull the whole collage this way. You see that? It gets too big. I'm trying to keep it within this space. So I think that's what I'm, I'm going with like that. Okay, so I think I, oh, and then plus there's the two, the rubber stamping. Well, you know what? I don't even need the rubber stamping because if I put in a postage stamp, then that takes, you know, I'm replacing one of my prompts with that. So I will put a postage stamp and I will do this. Okay, I think that's it. Now, what I will do is I will glue. How much, what am I doing with time? One, okay, we're good. Let me grab my glue stick and my double-sided tape. I hope this is all making sense, guys. I hope that you're all working on your own. I wish I could see what you're doing. There's this glue. And I do need double-sided tape. I didn't pull it out of my drawer. Now my computer's in the way, so I have to take it out. Okay, that's all right. Okay. 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 So I'm going to use double-sided tape on the back of the photo only, just because you can see that it's kind of curling and it's a heavier 
weight of paper and I want it to have a firm, you know, to adhere firmly to the background. So I will put, I'm going to, I'm going to try and keep these exactly where they are. Now, if you're careful, if you're worried about stuff moving and, you know, trying to remember, oh, that needs to show and all this, take a pencil and um, you can mark things. And I'm actually going to turn this because I don't need all of that blue. I'll go like this. Okay. So let me put this all back down. It's really important for this pink to show and it's right close. I'm wondering if I should move it. Eh, should I try? Let's see. It would be better if it was over here because then the pink could stand out. Do you see that? You see that difference? Okay, let's try that. So we'll go like this and like this and this up here. And then this will be down here at this intersection. Okay, I think that will also work. The background paper, do I want some of the pink to show at the bottom? Yes, I do. Let me move this down because again, the watch is causing problems. Causing problems. What should I do with that? Maybe just cut it. I'll just cut off the more of the wrist, the band. Let's try that. This is good. I like all this. It's just this. Like that. kind of like it on the left side, the watch on the left side. Okay, I think that's what I'm going to go with. All right, fine. Fine, fine, fine. Okay, so now I have, I'm just going to lift it up and very carefully with my pencil, mark it just so I know. And they don't need to be precise, of course, because if you want to adjust and move things slightly, that's fine. But it's just so that I know. Yeah, approximately. This I will leave. I, I, I don't need to mark it because I, I will see where the placement is. And this I can also determine, but I think I want it approximately, I think it went approximately here. Okay, there, now I feel better about moving everything off, right? <laughs> this is kind of thick too, so might as well, let me just use double-sided tape on this. Um, glue stick would be fine, I'm sure it would be fine, but I just, I like, I like double-sided tape, I really do. Um, scissors, scissors. Now, I need to figure out the order. If I put this down, uh, when does the watch go on? It needs to go before, right? Okay, so I cannot glue this down until the watch goes down. And I also need to put this 
first. Okay, that's fine. Okay. So let me do this one. This is super thin, so glue stick will work just fine. Make sure it's the right way. Yes, yes, that's correct. Better be. Okay. Good. Now the watch. And I will put this, get this prepared. I just had this left over from another project, so I want to use it up. Let's see. I actually put this mark too far down so I can I can um, erase that with the with the rubber stamp or rubber eraser later. So let me make sure. Okay, I think that's gonna be good. And then put a little bit more just at the top and the bottom. So I'm looking at comments. The watch is a strong color to have directly connected to the picture and it brings a lot of weight to the top. Um, I find the watch distracting. Um, maybe place a diagonal. Let's see. Well, if I don't use this, is it back to the drawing board? Is it back to scrounging around, looking for other things? I have this little watch face, but it doesn't have any, is it shiny? Well, actually it is shiny, but is that, I wonder if that's too tiny. I do like watches. This red is not good, but that blue is interesting. Um, this is not going to work. It's just a wrong, wrong type of material. Let's see. Well, you know what? I was going to say these ladies are in Hamburg. And this is German wine. Let's see. Well, let me put this down so that I'm not holding it in my hand anymore. Now, mind you, I've already glued these ones down, so let's see if I can make this work. I could do something like this, but then I could, I'd have to go like this, and I would cut this probably Where is my ruler? How could I lose my ruler? It's such a, well, maybe because it's so tiny. Here it is. So what if I cut it like right there? I, Cause I do want this Japanese text to show, but will it look too weird if I do that? Right, if this is covered up. Should I do that instead? <laughs> Can you not do the watch horizontally? Um, let's see. Do the watch horizontally. 
wow, I've never done collage by group before. This is kind of interesting. Okay, let's see. What if I do it like this, maybe? But it just sticks out too much. Well, let me cut this off already. Get too much of this. Too much of that. Okay, it's getting better. It's smaller. <laughs> smaller and smaller. Um, I mean, that doesn't look too bad like that. I just don't want it to be like it stands out too much. And if I start, I mean, I could, I could cover it with this, but then it looks like a mistake, like I, like I forgot to pull it out more, right? So I could do that. How does that look like that? Is this close enough that you can see? How's that? And then this will go over here like this. That'll work. Are the women Japanese? No, they are from Hamburg. Hamburg. I think that'll do. Yeah, okay, good. I'm getting lots of feed good feedback here. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this watch down because I don't want to deal with it anymore. Okay. Is that how I had it or like this? <laughs> Darn, I should have used my pencil. Okay, no, that's fine. Okay, like that. All right, good, good, good. Um, so now I need to, I'll, I'll erase that in a minute. And let me put this down. So I wanted the top and the bottom of the pink to show. So I will just go like that. That's nice. Okay. That looks good. So now I have all these intersections here. I've got an intersection here and well, I guess mostly here, but also here. Now let me check again. Maybe Maybe this one is going to work better now here because I want, do I want to pull the collage down this way or do I want it to go over this way? And that's, that's kind of what this is doing. I don't want to cover all of my corners. I want some of my corners to show. Let me see. I think I like this one better. Yeah, I think I like this one. Okay. So. I'm going to glue this one as well. And then after I glue this last piece, I will determine if I need to add a postage stamp or not. Okay. There we are. That's super cute. And I don't know if you can see, but there's pink in this flower that matches the pink with this. So that really works nicely. Okay, um, postage stamp. Not sure. Oh, but the rubber stamping in two colors. Ooh. <gasps> you know what? I should have done some rubber stamping underneath as the first layer. Well, I will do something else. Let me think about what other rubber stamping I could do. I don't want it to be a lot. I want it to be very, very little. So let me see what I have.
Okay. I have got some things. A date stamp, you think, or a number? Yes, numbers. I could do numbers. Um, numbers are easy. Numbers are easy. I found also, I have these, I have more Japanese stamps. I think these are from a post office in Japan. So I could possibly use these. They're very interesting. Um, but a date might work as well. These have um, some really nice numbers. Let's see here. So I'm gonna say no to this. Well, I mean, I could do a big one. This one would be wor okay. I have all this space up here. I was gonna cut it down, but I could use that. I've got like five minutes to decide here. Okay, that's too much, yeah. And I also have, <laughs> I've got a wasp, but that's not a very fun bug. Let's see. Okay, I like this one or I like some numbers. The numbers work well because it's super easy to put here. I also have this number printer. I'll show you what it looks like. This is kind of cool because it's kind of in a 60s font. I, I kind of feel like it's in a 60s font. It's very thin and tall. And I think that would go really nicely right here. Okay. So I'm going to... Well, gosh, but it's supposed to be in two different color inks, isn't it? Two colors. Okay. Wow. I'm caught by my own rules. Okay. I don't, I think I'm gonna, I'll probably have to do one of these then. Let's see what these look like. like my favorite set of colors. I use them all the time. So let's try. Let's try these two. Just going to try this. Just because I want to see what it looks like. cool. Well, for the sake of expediency, maybe I will just use those. Otherwise, I'm going to be trying to decide all day. Okay, so I'm going to do... Now, do I want them on the top or on the bottom? I will do them on the bottom. Okay. And I will do another one in the blue.
All right, now I'm just gonna cut it down and I think I'm about done. So this is about the same width I want here. Well, here is fine like this. Okay, and then the top I have about a half an inch. So I will also do about a half an inch here. Okay, I think I have too much on the left and on the right. So let me cut that down. I should have trimmed this a little bit. It's a little too much, but that's okay. There we go. I like it. I like it. I think it turned out well. I'll take my assignment. And I'm going to glue it to the back just just so I have it there that's it any last questions Yeah, the watch. Yeah, yeah, the watch. I did get it in there. Thank goodness. Yay, everybody says looks good. <laughs> All right. Um, is there anything else that I need to share with you? Oh, the, the um, giveaway is open through March 31st. So make sure you get uh, a link to me. By then or email me with your photo so that I can put you on my list I have a big spreadsheet with all the names and of course there's a number associated to every input so what I will do is I will do one of those things online where I say pick 20 numbers between 1 and 200 or however many and it'll give me a bunch of numbers and then according to those numbers I will just um, let people know and I will send out a message to everyone who has signed up and who is on my list so that's that will you're tagged and you'll get the message so that you know who who receives what okay so thanks so much for being here I hope this was fun and that you got to work on something for yourself as well and good luck if you are going to be participating okay so I'm gonna say bye